In this movie, we'll take a look at how variables work, and then we'll do three separate activities where you can learn about each variable type in a little more detail, and then how to use them in a real course. All right, so if you're not familiar with variables, variables are just a way for you to collect and store information. And then you can later use or display that information in other ways in your course. Now, because variables are universal to your course, it doesn't matter what slide you're on at any point in the course, you can always use or display the value of a variable. Now, the first thing to know about variables is that there is only three types of variables. You have text-based variables, numbers, and then true-false variables, whether something's true or false. So with text variables, you can collect text information, such as a learner's name, and then display that throughout the course by referring to the learner. It's a great way to personalize the course, or you could use it on a summary screen or a certificate screen. For number-based variables, you can use those to track the number of points or scores a learner has earned during the course, and then put those on a final result screen or scoreboard. Or you can determine whether something's true or false, such as did a learner complete a slide or did they complete a scene? And you can use that to display a bookmark that shows progress throughout the course. Now, when you're working with variables in Storyline, it's basically a three-step process. The first step is to create the variable. You need to create a variable for what you want it to do. Now, when you create the variable, you give it a name and you choose the type of variable, whether it's a text, number, or true, false, and then you set the variable's starting value. The second step is to adjust the value of the variable, and you do this with triggers or the built-in data entry fields, such as text and numeric. And then the third step is to use the variable by showing the variable's current value or using a trigger to do something based on the variable. So let's go ahead and look at an example. So if you look at this course here, you can see it's a good example of a text-based variable. In this case, I, it's asking for a first name, but I don't know what the learner's first name is, right? So that's what the variable is going to collect for us. So right now, Storyline's using a variable called name, and there has no value. The value changes when I add my name. So I'm going to go ahead and enter David. And at this point, the value for this variable is David. If I came back in here and I said, oh, my name's not David, it's Dave. Well, the variable is going to, the value is going to change. A variable can only hold one piece of data at a time. So every time I update this, that becomes the new value for the variable. But again, because variables are universal to the course, I can display that variable anywhere else in the course that I want. So if I jump to a new slide, and you can see the variable is displaying here in the text box on the slide. If I start over, and let's say I enter a different name, say Scott, and click Submit. Let's go back to that slide. And you can see the variable's been updated to the new name. And again, that's just because a variable can only hold one piece of data at a time. So the name that we displayed this time changed from David to Scott when I went back and then entered a new name for that variable. So variables just hold information, and I can use that information or display that information later in the course. Next, let's take a look at a typical number variable. All right, so in this example, we have a drag and drop interaction where I have several food items over here on the left and a drop target plate on the right. Now, this is a number variable example because we want to count the calories for each of the food items. So we're working with a single variable called calories. It's a number variable, and each of these food items has a value associated with it. So if I just drag over the fish and click submit, that's adding, that fish value is adding 106 to calories. I can continue adding additional food items. And just like we said before, because a variable can only hold one piece of data, um, we're just adding to that data. We're not replacing the value, we're adding it in this case. So in the text-based example, we were replacing it. Here, each time we drag an item over and click submit, we're adding the food value, the point value of that food item to our total calorie variable. And if, of course, if I remove these and click submit, we can see that we're subtracting variables. And if I remove all of them and submit, I'm back to the starting value for calories, which is a zero. So each one of these has a different point value associated with them. And once I click submit, I'm calling or referencing that point value and then adding it to the starting value for calories. So 300 for the ice cream plus the fries 
and so on. So we're adding and subtracting points from a default value of zero. So this is a good example of a number variable where you want to keep score or points for either choices made for a quiz type interaction or in this one a point value for calories. So that's a really good example of a common use of number variables. Let's take a look at a true false variable. All right, so here's a really common use for true false variables. And that is you want to determine whether or not a learner has completed a scene or a chapter in the course and then provide some visual feedback to the learner indicating that they've completed the module. So each one of these buttons right here represents a module. If I click into Wellness Matters, Right, we saw this one earlier, and I'll proceed through the course. Right, here's a slider. This is the last slide in the module. And what I want to tell Storyline is that this module for Wellness Matters is now true. Completed module is true. So I can now click Next, and you see now that we have this visual icon that displays indicating that this module, in fact, has been completed. And we can do that with a true false, right? So each of these values would be set to false by default, and then as we proceed and get to the last slide or a certain point in those uh, slides, we would just set the variable, change the variable from false to true. And again, this is a very common type of use for the true-false variables because you just want to determine whether or not something has changed. Yes, it's changed. No, it's changed. And then if it has or hasn't, do this or do that. In this case, we just want to change the status of our icon to uh, visited or complete based on the completion of a module. All right, so we took a look at text-based variables. We looked at some number-based variables and common uses for true-false variables. Now we'll look at what we can do with the variables and start to put this into practice for each specific type of variable. And we'll do that in the following tutorials.